start off with Sam, talk through how, how is he? Yeah, um, we're going to go through concussion protocol. It's unfortunate. Um, so the likelihood he's going to be unavailable um, for a stretch. Um, he's OK now, but obviously he definitely got hit. And the way he hit the floor and his, like, his arm sort of went straight up. And um, Yeah, so we'll get more of the extent and we'll do a follow-up concussion test. Uh, we'll make sure he's all right. But a little cut in the mouth and a little bit of a headache and we'll manage that. So the game, I guess, well, congratulations. How did you see that game playing out there? You managed to hold the lead the entire time. Yeah, I won't lie. Like, I, f I don't know why that's the most frustrated I've felt this season. Um, I feel like it's the last hurdle for us to overcome, and yet um, where I probably value it in everything else that we were accomplishing, I didn't prioritise it as that high, and I'm just... It's like execution on the offensive end, and we have glimpses of it, and it's 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 it's... It's taken me a moment to process it, right? This is the, the, my sense of feel is um, we're at the halfway point of the season. We've got nine wins, OK? If we didn't blow that game in Adelaide, we're on a four-game winning streak. You know, we're, we're competing for a top two spot and all these things. We've got the number one defence in the league right now. We're not doing that based on points allowed. We're doing that by the actual, like, um, defensive rating and turnovers generated and block steals and all that stuff. And um, we got the second worst offense, and I just really started frustrating. It's really started annoying me. And it's nothing to do with the personnel it, because we're very capable. Um, it's trying to get key guys in particular positions, and I want to be further down the track where we are. And the good thing is we've got a string of games coming up that's going to help us build a bit of momentum rolling through. I'm also conscious of the fact that we got nine wins, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be beating on the guys in a sense of this negative energy. So this way, I'm going to take a day to process it. We'll do our review before we fly out for Tassie. Um, but it's a great prospect to know that this area of improvement that we have to achieve, right now we're, 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 we're a work in progress that's sitting third on the ladder. And that's pretty cool. Rotated deep into that roster, Lat, Mirko, Josh, they all got minutes. Searching. I was searching, and that's and, and that's what they, I, I coach frustrated. So I even frustrated with myself in the way I did rotations and the way I was searching. Um, I had short leash with a lot of guys. Um, I had frustrating moments with a lot of guys, and that's on me to be better and 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 coach these guys. You know, um, the way I feel like we're going to thrive in, um, because I saw it on the court. You know, there was moments where we impact body language. And that's I, I play a role in that. So I need to be better because if I'm constantly like like beating someone down and constantly taking withdrawals out of them and not placing any deposits, and then we're at the foul line, we're up ten, and I can see the guy's body language is concerning, and that's on me. So um, yeah, I'll review myself probably more than anything from this game. I think we're, we're all pretty positive out there, but um, yeah, you can feel, you know, we kind of go up and down. We, got, we, got, we can tell we've got a long way to go um, just to feel out there, but I thought, I thought some guys came in, brought some energy when they needed to. Um, yeah, but I mean, Taj led the way I felt, um, picked the energy up when we needed and, and led us, but yeah. Just to out those minutes. Yeah, he was amazing. Like, if, I, if you're going to pick up my spirits, you've just done it, right? And he was electric. He was defensive. He was offensive game flowing. He was, he was playmaking. He was attacking the rim. He was finding his teammates. And it was unfortunate that he picked up a couple of cheap ones. And, you know, we had to sit him out um, in the second when he picked up his third. And we highlighted the reason why in the change room was it was a stuff up in our rotations that put Bull in a bad spot. And so the miscues of others put Bull in a situation where he picked up his third and now he sits out. And so the compound, you know, the, the, the flow and effect from that. So for him to then come out and play with four fouls, um, close out the game the way he did by not playing conservative, because, you know, players can be guilty of that. I'll, 
picked up two quick ones and I'm going to pick up my third one and then they're real passive in the way they defend and that wasn't bull so um, yeah I mean wow right he was great he was how does that performance from ball rate I guess across it now he's, he's reached 50 now like how's that rate based off what you've seen because that was among his better his better performances his better nights out I think offensively Agreed, you know, and that's what shows up on the stat sheets. Uh, it's when you look at like the top five steals in the game, uh, Taj is number one, I think DJ's number three, and Shannon's number four. Um, that was before this game, so I don't know if that's still the case. So, unfortunately, like Bull maybe doesn't always get the recognition of what he does on the defensive end. He's by far my, my pit bull out there, and, um, you know, he does it weekly with everybody and people who are. MVP contenders are having an off night, coincidentally, when he's defending them. So, um, offensively tonight was what showed up on the stat sheet. And yeah, if, if he wasn't in foul trouble, because I rarely sub him out, you know, he probably would have had 30 something. So, um, yeah, it's definitely up there. And hopefully we can just keep that mojo going. And happy, I guess, uh, again, with your guitar, you, you went close to a, to a triple double in there. He um, did my. Yeah, he did I did my head in with that pass. Like we, we, we had all the time in the world and then I was setting everybody up in the court and I just see this ball sail over the ceiling and then they get the ball back and Sobe gets a baseline two and that was frustrating. You take out that, I don't know, five second window. Yeah, he was great. You know, we started off absolutely garbage again and then he comes on the floor and sets the tone. So having him as that spike off the bench is, is really important for us. Um, you know, but again, we can't just rely on him, right, to to engage us defensively. He needs to um, not. We don't need to rely on him so much. But the fact that we can is huge. And yeah, my last one as well. Just um, you, you were talking before about you were searching for something, especially in that, that first part of the first quarter, trying to get the offense going. And then next, you had a bit like he hit the court and, and he said it all. I just in terms of his effort, you could see from up the top, you could see the effort he was putting in, like. What did you make of his impact and what he did tonight? Yeah, huge. And, you know, like Ben's been amazing in the sense that sometimes I've put him out there and he's played a small stretch and then other times I've played him a little bit longer, like tonight. And, and, and tonight was one of those nights where, you know, when he was out there, he changed the game. And so it was important to keep him out there and keep that momentum going. Um, yeah, he's massive. He's, he's been like this all season. Um, and I expect the same. Over here, Chris. A couple of quick ones. Obviously, what's happening at Brisbane has nothing to do with you, but at the same time, how tough can it make it to prepare to play them tonight, given the coaching changes? And I guess until you know a few minutes before tip off, you probably didn't know if Johnson was going to play, if Baines was going to play, if, if White was going to play. How challenging was this to prepare for? Um, it, obviously, in terms of a scout perspective, um, obviously it poses its challenges, and um, I feel like we navigated that well. Um, this was one of those weeks where, especially after that Illawarra game, you know, we, we focused a little bit more on what we needed to get done at uh, both ends of the floor. Um, the threat that Brisbane posed, right, is, is a sense of freedom now that with all the disarray sort of going on, um, the, the players can galvanise from that. And I feel like they did. There was moments where, you know, their huddles were tight and they were engaged. And, you know, if anybody thought that... Uh, you know, Brisbane were going to be easy beats tonight. It was direct opposite. And don't forget, you know, they still got like a lot of talent. They got guys who represented the Australian national team. They got um, up and coming players like DJ Mitchell. And so, you know, um, if, if you want leadership, you just have a look at the five they put on the floor. So um, from a scout perspective, obviously, um, you know, yeah, like they, they ran similar sets, but it was, you know, patterns and so forth you sort of look for. But um, in terms of the way they went about their business, oh, they were absolute professionals. I, I credit the players, I credit Vandy for preparing them because um, I know, you know, um, they probably would have had some obstacles this week, but if you uh, looked at the way they went about their business, they were absolute 100% professionals and I, I tip my hat to them. Let me see if I can pick out another positive for you as well. Um, we've talked about Josh Davies' um, journey to get to this point as well. He scored his first NBL point out there tonight. Are you happy for him? Yeah, I, when Sam obviously got hit with the concussion and, you know, we needed someone to battle Baines, <coughs> he did a fantastic job. And then DJ found him on the attack break and he finished with a nice little smooth 
right hand layout. Did he tap the backboard? <laughs> I know. Yeah, he missed the opportunity to go layout, tap the backboard. But no, happy for him. He's man, dude's an animal. Like he gets in the gym, he eats dumbbells for breakfast. He he gets in half an hour before everybody else. He works out hard. Um, yeah, he's he's going to have a, an amazing future. Ben, just one for you. What are your thoughts now on the challenge of taking on the Jack Jumpers down in, in Tassie on, on Saturday? Um, everything stays the same for us. You know, just um, we just got to recover tomorrow um, and then just concentrate on us, I think, leading in. Um, just fix the areas that we need to fix. Um, but, yeah, a lot of trust amongst this group leading into this stretch of game. So just keep pushing forward. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.